Real quick on the, on the what, on the oil analysis. I'm gonna skip over several slides. I'm just gonna kind of look at the last three. And while the computer's booting up, so I grabbed this out of my colleague's office. This would be a Caterpillar oil analysis test kit. Kind of a pretty cool little hoodicky. Yep, right out of there. This would be your sample bottle right here. And this would be, is that the sample bottle? No, this is your sample bottle here, excuse me. There's your sample bottle right there. And this comes with the handy dandy little mailer as well. Okay, now this is an older one. So I, the last I saw these mailers had been replaced with a teeny little cardboard box. So I'm not sure. That was with a, the lab and, and billings. And so I'm not sure what these are now. So um, this is our sampling unit. This is a little bit worse for wear. But it was just a demo model, that's why they kind of gave it to us. That's if you don't just stick it under the... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, the other nice thing that this has is you'll see these little probes right on the end. You can actually have a receptacle in somewhere in an oil gallery. So you actually, while the engine is running, you plug this into the receptacle, goes into here, and you can actually take a sample while the engine's running, right, which is kind of cool. The little receptacles I know can get kind of spendy. We have a bunch that we bought for uh, the hook uh, gauge set up to a, a PS6 um, <coughs> power shift transmission, a Steiger. Each receptacle was 50 bucks. So they're not, they're not exactly cheap. But once they're in there, I mean, you don't take them in and take them out. You just leave them in, put a cap over them, and life is good. So, so that's, I'll just go ahead and pass this around. You guys can look at that. So yeah, this is all our sample is right here. All right, and then there's a little bit of, I guess we can look at the paperwork on the inside, you can kind of look at that. SOS, scheduled oil analysis, um, owner, job site, sample date, equipment, meter reading, et cetera, et cetera. So all the information. If, um, if you guys do this or you have your producers do this and they have a form like this, make sure that their, their writing is very legible because what is... <laughs> Yeah, okay. Oil smudges. Oil smudges, Oil smudges yeah, yeah, grease, and yeah. From their gloves. From the gloves. Like, very good. <laughs> <laughs> because this information is transposed into the computer, and two slides, well, that bottom slide we'll look at, is actually an example of what the readout would be that you would get back as the consumer. Okay? So. So what we're going to do this afternoon, well, let me just, let me stop right there. How are we feeling about this morning? Am I kind of giving you what you're expecting or my way off base or, I mean, how are we feeling? It's been great. Okay. Yeah. All right, good. As long as you're getting something out of it, I'm not ready to fire my butt, so <laughs> I think we're good. So, okay. So what we'll do this afternoon is there's three slides left in this. We're going to finish off this on the oil sampling. Then we're going to take a uh, kind of a little trip over to a couple of different buildings and look at some components. Uh, then we'll just come back and continue with our little slide presentation. That sound like a deal? Okay. Mm -hmm. The worst, the absolute worst time. There's, there's two bad times to do lectures during the day. After lunch. Yep. One o'clock is the absolute. No, actually, eight o'clock. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Four o'clock isn't too bad. I've done four o'clock lectures. They're not the best, but one o'clock is the absolute worst. The abs in fact, I refuse to do lectures one o'clock. It, it's pointless. It's totally Worse pointless. The audience well, they they just got back from lunch and they're bellies, asleep and full bellies. Cold yeah. Chairs. Cold chairs. Yeah. <laughs> cold <laughs> destiline on, sucking the life out of your coffee. Yeah. And <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It, I hate it. <laughs> yeah. Really. <laughs> Don't fall asleep. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so oil analysis, who's involved? So we have the person who makes a decision to utilize the oil analysis method of a PM. And that's what we kind of were talking a little about this morning. <coughs> this, you know, and as Nicole alluded, this needs to become a habit. You know, it's not something we do sporadically. It's something we do every single PM for every single piece of equipment. You know, you're dealing with you know, an older tractor. How you can't buy a, a, a good used tractor for less than ten thousand dollars. Well, if 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 your customer or excuse me, your your producer is buying one for ten thousand dollars, then that's a lot of money to them. I mean, hell, it's a lot of money to probably everyone in this room. And then some of your, <laughs> to, you know, 
true. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> and then some of your producers are buying combines of tractors that are damn near half a million dollars. I mean, that's some serious, serious money. And they're going to balk at a $10 oil sample? You know, if you start relating that, you know, and, and to, to kind of go back to what you asked before lunch of how do we get our producers to do this, put it in those dollar values. You know, they've got to realize the dollars of what their investment is. And, you know, hopefully what we're going to get out of, a lot of what, out of what we're doing this next couple of days is the return on that investment, the efficiency. Well, this leads to big time efficiency. I am totally sold on oil sampling, totally sold. You know, and I hope that you guys can get your producers to do that too, okay? So the second person is the one who takes a sample and the records of the pertinent information. Cleanliness, absolutely critical. Absolutely critical. If you get, you know, the, the, not the, so this is slide number 39. Slide number 41 has an example of what a sample sheet will be like when you, your producers get it back. If there is uh, an increase in trend line of Na, sodium, well, did that come from the engine or that come from the dirt that got on the engine when we took the damn sample? All right, so cleanliness is absolutely critical, okay? Record the pertinent information. So that little sheet that was going around, again, you know, have them not get too much oil or grease off their rubber gloves spilt on there. Make sure it's legible, make sure it's in pen and we can't smudge it, you know, blah, 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 because that's all transposed onto, into the computer, which is, comes out on the printout, okay? Lab technician, they need to be trained. They need to know what the heck they are doing. Um, the training for the actual doing the sample in the machine, um, I mean, I did a three-day training, and I felt very comfortable, very comfortable with doing samples at that point. You know, right now, no way in heck, all right? But another couple of days, I'd be right up to speed, okay? This is the critical person right here, the person who interprets. That takes months of training. My friend Jim out at uh, Peoria in Illinois, uh, I can't remember how many months he said, you know, on and off. It wasn't, you know, straight month per month, but it was a lot of training that he's had to do on um, just how to interpret it. And that's where the crux of it lies. And, you know, you're asking about what, what questions to ask of a lab. Well, I would be definitely looking at, you know, the cleanliness and all that, but I would also be looking at the credentials of this person right here. All right, because that's where basically where the buck stops. Their recommendation is going back to your producer. If the train lines are okay, and that's his recommendation, keep sampling, you know, blah, 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 and we have a catastrophic failure because he misinterpreted, whoops, all right, not good, okay? And also the follow-up. The follow-up is back on your, partly on your producer. So this person here may not be the one who contacts your producer. Right? There might be an intermediary who's going to do the follow-up with your producer. And the intermediary will, you know, might be a person on the phone, it might be an email, uh, <coughs> probably email or text messages is probably the thing to do now. Um, you know, keep on going, life is good. Oops, we've got a little train line here we might know what to look at. Shut her down right now. That's where your producer comes in. If the trend line indicates that we need to shut down that engine because we have a pretty potential catastrophic failure and your producer doesn't, well, that's kind of back on your producer. So they need to take heed. They also need to take, I guess, faith in what they're being told from these um, different people that are doing the work for them. Okay? Uh, keep in mind a few things. The information on the sheet is pertinent. Um, Whatever your um, producer writes down on the information sheet, that's what's going to go on the report. All right, so that has to be current. Turnaround time. That is pretty critical. The dates are recorded in a computer, and they are printed out on the, the um, uh, um, report. So the day that that sample came in, the day that it, the sample was um, put through the test machine, and the day that it was shipped out, all right? So that turnaround time typically needs to be around about a, min a maximum of 48 hours, okay? If everything's looking good, you may not get the physical report for maybe another week, but you'll get maybe a text message or an email saying, yeah, life is good, keep on going, all right? Trend line, we talked about that. So the very, the absolute very first one will be your baseline. That's really not going to tell you a whole lot. What I will tell you, though, once you start getting progressive oil samples, is you'll compare those and see if there's any increase in 
sodium or chrome or sulfur, you know, whatever metals are in there, okay? Um, what the recommendations are, and that goes back to this person right here, okay? And any trace elements. So that would be any elements that may not be involved with anything in the engine. For example, um, we might have some trace elements in a soil. Well, that dirt was around the, the port where we pulled our oil sample from, but because you know, I didn't do what I was supposed to do, when I took the sample, I got some excess dirt in that oil. It's got nothing to do with the engine. All right, so it's got everything to do with I screwed up. All right, and this is what you would get back. So <coughs> this is actually one that uh, was sent in uh, from a, one of our own engines. Um, Northern Montana, oh, this is like kind of way back in the Northern Montana College. It hasn't been Northern Montana since what, 1992? Yeah. yeah, something like that. Um, Greg Klaus, he's still here. He was one of my instructors, now a colleague. We have Haver Caterpillar, it's a 30, 3406B engine. It was in a, uh, it was a truck engine. We had Conoco 1540 oil. And uh, I think we just, oh, that's actually the serial number of the engine. Instead of equipment, we just put in the, the serial number right there. Lab control number, sample number, ooh, that's not good. We had an abnormal reading right there, okay? We come over to the uh, left-hand side. We see the process date was, now this is kind of interesting. So the sample date when they received it was 128, 205 was the process date. I think there's a little bit of an oopsie there. That's a lot of days. That's a lot of days, okay? So I would like to, you know, in fact, you know, I would take heedance of this, but I would really question this, you know, what was going on there, all right? Positive antifreeze reaction with high sodium, Copper and lead elevated. Silicon likely also from coolant entry. Coolant leak likely. Uh, check for coolant leak if unexplained coolant loss is, is, uh, is what? Noted. Noted, okay, thank you. Check oil filter for metal. Ooh. Check for abnormal noise, change oil. Resample next 25 hours. Bearing wear as possible. Well, I check bearing wear, we're gonna start tearing apart engines. All right, so if I see this right here, well, there's going to be some alarm bells going off for me, okay? But we would also kind of put a rider on it with this right here. So this is what is being recommended to us as the customer or to your producers or whatever. Yes, sir? So it says silicon likely also from coolant entry. Like they're not 100% sure where that silicon is coming from? Right. Is that... There's only a few places where it can come from, and the most, the, the most regular one would be from coolant. Yeah. Well, would the, wouldn't the coolant be sampled separately from the oil? I guess I don't understand how they can say it's just likely from the coolant. Okay, I don't understand your question. So they found silicon in the same sample. In the oil sample, correct. Oh, so there's, they're saying that coolant is probably getting into the I, into the oil, into yeah, the oil. yeah, okay. yeah, yeah, gotcha. yeah, yeah, this is, this, oh, sorry, yeah, okay. I got you now, right, yeah, this is an engine oil it's sample, oil, yeah, just an oil yeah, sample. yeah, just an oil sample, correct, correct, yeah, yes, and actually that raises a good point, because another thing we could do now is we could go back and we could sample the coolant and see if the silicon was the same makeup in the coolant, all right, um, they're also suggesting that we check for coolant leaks, so that would get back to that you know, little pressure tester we talked about. All right, so the, your, your producer might notice that we're losing coolant. Um, you know, well, whatever, we'll just keep topping it off. It's not a big deal. Well, it could be a very big deal. So we pressure test the cap. Well, the radiator cap was pretty good. We pressure test the system. It's not holding pressure, so I check all my hoses, my heater hoses and all that. I got no leaks. Well, if I'm losing pressure, it's gotta be going somewhere. Guess what? It's going right in here, okay? So now the, 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 the downside of that is if it's a, an internal coolant leak, well, we're looking at head gaskets, we're looking at cracked blocks, we're looking at cracked heads, and that gets kind of spendy, you know, really spendy. So now let's look at, talk about preventative maintenance, all right? Maybe if we back up 
our producer didn't pay attention to that engine when it overheated. We just kept on working and we warped the head. We cracked the head or something like that, okay? Now we know we've got an issue, okay? So what are we gonna do? We can either keep running until we have a catastrophic failure or we might wanna put that particular component out of service, get a loaner tractor, loaner combine, loaner swath or whatever. In this case, it was, a, I think, out of a semi-truck. We get a loaner semi-truck and we take a look at this engine. As long as that engine's still running, we have some core value with it, right? If it fails in grenades, <laughs> you're there, there. no, we're not doing any core value. Okay, and those cores are worth some serious money. Okay, so now the, your, your producer has some definite decisions to make. You know, which was where you might come in and say, well, let's maybe get into a spreadsheet and let's weigh out some, you know, some financial options of what we might be looking at here. Okay, get, you know, the local truck company in for get, you know, parts, prices, or, you know, labor and all that sort of stuff and kind of get them in the mix as well. Okay, so that's where, it, sorry, go ahead. Decipher that first sentence. This is engine oil, correct? This is engine oil, correct. I mean, I think if you don't know how to read these, I think your comment about confusing the oil. Right, yep, thing. yep, I, I hear, what, hear what you're saying, yeah. It's like, what does that um, even mean? Positive antifreeze reaction with high sodium. High sodium. Okay, so this means that when they did the test, so this test that they do, the sample <laughs> is brought up to um, very high temperature and then it's sprayed through light. Right. I, I, FTR, FTIR. The, the way the light bounces back off gives out different color spectrum, and that's how they know different elements give different colors. So when they put this oil through that light spectrum, it bounced back that there was high sodium, okay? And they also saw that there was silicon, which led them to believe that there's gonna be antifreeze in there. Okay, okay does that make sense? Yep. Okay, okay. Um, so coolant leak is likely, and they, I think they're pretty much stuck on the coolant leak. Um, abnormal noise, you know, change oil and retest. This one's back on your customer or your um, producer. If they elect not to retest within 25 hours, well, you know, that's their choice, okay? We could have a catastrophic failure, all right? Bearing where it's possible, well, that's an engine teardown. There's no way you're going to check bearings without taking a lot of the engine apart, okay? So the, the reason they put this in here is oil is a very, very good lubricant, right? Water is not. So you have oil with your bearing clearances and mixed with water, then, yeah, you're going to possibly have metal to metal contact. So you can have some excess bearing wear, okay? If that makes sense. Um, we come down here, here's all our wear elements, and these are just numbers. So this is what, if, we, uh, if everything was good here, we'll just ignore that. If this was presumably good, the next test we would do, we would get that back, we would compare the new numbers with these numbers. If they've gone up, if they've gone down, if they stayed the same. That's where we start developing our trend line. All right? Uh, we have oil contaminants over here. And here's all our abbreviations down the bottom, okay, right here. If, I, if this was my engine, I would take heedance of all this, but I would probably resample this afternoon and send another sample in because this concerns me right here, all right? That's five days. Either five or six, I can't remember if we had, oh no, that's January, excuse me, so they, yeah, that's five. No, that's seven days, eight days, right? Yeah, eight days. That's a lot of, that's a lot of turnaround time, All right? So that's, that's kind of a red flag to me. I'd probably resample this afternoon, the same engine, ship that in, and came out with the same results, and yeah, we're probably got a problem. But if it came out with different results, then I'd probably be calling them up and say, hey, what's going on here? So, are you suggesting that the results could have been different if it would have been processed within 24 or 48 hours? Could have been, yeah, with the settling and mixing of different elements, et cetera. Yeah, okay. yeah. Yeah, that's why the one I've done in about 48 hours is it gets in there, it's fresh, bam, that's tested. Yeah, yeah. So, so this is one example. Um, Caterpillar, their SOS, their scheduled oil sampling. Um, they've been doing this for, gosh, years years and years and years, and they will continue to do so. So lots of different outlets to get the oil sampled at. Um, so just, you know, 
If your producers want to call me and talk to me about it, please have them do that. I'll be more than happy to talk to them. Yeah. So is there an acceptable range in those? I mean, I know you we're setting the, the trend lines, so we're going to look at the next sample and see right. how it compares. Right. But, I mean, can we just tell from the one sample whether we're out of whack? And um, I think you probably could. Um, see that bottom line? See reverse side for interpretation oh, of yeah. results. Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> can we see the reverse side? Apparently <laughs> <laughs> <Totally> not. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, see this number here, this is sodium. To me, that's pretty cotton picking high, you know? Um, with, but, but, but again, without having a reference, we would have to see the reverse side for interpretation. And, but, but I'm thinking that's probably high. So sodium is dirt. I'm getting dirt somewhere. Could be the air cleaner, it could be because I'm not, you know, handling um, my oil correctly. It could be because of the sample that I didn't clean up the receptacle before I took the damn sample. All right, so. They'd be red flags, but I wouldn't you know, completely shut the engine down just because of these two high numbers. See, that's copper, right? Mm -hmm. That would be bearing wear. Now, that would make sense if I'm not getting my lubrication down there. I'm going to stop wearing my bearings, right? Okay. Cool. Hey, Steve, just out of curiosity, because um, you mentioned, you know, it happens. You get some dirt on your hands. You're taking the oil sample. You end up getting some dirt in there. Are there some YouTube videos that we can shoot to producers that got questions about oil sampling that are pretty good? I'm sure there probably is. I've never looked, but I'm YouTube just about has every subject known to man. <laughs> so, okay. yeah, that's a good idea. Okay. Yeah. So why don't you get back to us on that tomorrow? Suddenly everyone's done asking questions. <laughs> 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 no, I'm just picking up the call. I'm not going to pick on you guys. <laughs> 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 hey, shall I might look at that tonight. That's a, that's a very good good question. I mean, I've YouTubed a lot of stuff on this. I have so many guys just, you know, YouTube and oil sampling videos. Yeah. 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 Uh, to use no, your YouTube. dad's pretty cool. <laughs> <laughs> He's not too shabby. Um, but uh, YouTube video, especially for like taking apart Just stuff whatever, yeah. 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 I don't even know. <coughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. Good thought. I might check on that tonight, too. Yeah. Well, he said two. two. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'll, I'll check on it, too. Yeah, with that. Uh, quotation marks. <laughs> <laughs> okay, do I have any more questions on this? Have we beat this one down? Is that what you wanted to see right there? Right that's on. the other side. <laughs> yeah, that's the other side right there. <laughs> 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 I'll see if I can rebuild my dash ones and send it to you. That would help. Yeah. And I used to look in the reverse side. Nice. That'd be good. We'll see if I can find them without the question. The some oil samples? Yeah. Just so we can see the reverse. Yeah, I might actually try and dig one out. I. I I'm pretty sure I got some in my office, so I'll try and dig them out and we can bring them in tomorrow.